And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of June 13th, 2022. I'm Jason Parent with Aroostook County Action Program. On this week's edition, our feature interview will look at Pride Month. June is Pride Month across the United States. And we are going to talk about how that's being marked right here in Aroostook County. We're going to talk about Pride Aroostook as an organization and the upcoming Pride event being held right here in the county. We'll give you all of the information and what you need to know with three very special guests in just a little bit. But before we get to that, we're first going to get to the news and information that you can use again for this week of June 13th, 2022. And we start as we are continuing our 50th anniversary with uh, that notation of a celebration that's coming up uh, this week. Weekend. We're going to chat more about this, but we wanted to start right at the top with Pride Aroostook that is happening this Saturday, June 18th. It's at Riverside Park in Presque Isle. People are invited from across Aroostook County and beyond the Aroostook County borders. We're going to talk about the specific events coming up with our guests in just a little bit, but we just wanted you to mark that on your calendar. It's this Saturday, June 18th at Riverside Park in Presque Isle. Festivities begin at one o'clock and continue through five o'clock in the afternoon again on Saturday. We move on now to talk about one of our partner organizations and an activity that they have coming up that you're also invited to, and that's a community resource fair that's coming up later this month at the end of the month on June 30th. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at uh, Hope and Justice Projects facility at 5 Erskine Street here in Presque Isle. You can contact Tammy if you have any additional questions or need any additional information. Her phone number is there on the screen. We're encouraging fellow uh, providers of services across Aroostook County who provide resources to community members uh, to join us and be present at Hope and Justice Project's Community Resource Fair on the 30th of June. And of course, encourage all of you to check out the resources uh, that will be there on that day. We are also teasing for you this week that coming soon to a place near you or to a phone near you is ACAP's Summer Scavenger Hunt uh, powered by Goose Chase. We're already testing this out with our employees in a sort of different version of the game, uh, but it launches on June 21st, 2022, so a little later this month. We'll have lots more information coming up to you on next week's edition of ACAP today about this very exciting opportunity to learn more about your county and engage uh, in community activities uh, and score some points for a chance to win some really great prizes. So that's all the teas we're going to give you for this week, but we'll be back next week with more information on the summer scavenger hunt that will be happening countywide and that you'll want to be a part of. Um, so we'll, we'll share that more with you next week. We are also, again, putting a call out and reminding folks as the month of June uh, continues on that we are continuing to look for interested artists who would like to have their artwork featured on a special commemorative 50th anniversary potato bag that will be produced by Northeast Packaging here in Presque Isle uh, and that will uh, hold a potatoes grown at GBD, GB and D Pelletier Farms uh, up in St. John Plantation on the 50th anniversary potato plot up there that they have planted for ACAP. Uh, the proceeds uh, or the produce, I should say, that uh, we harvest there, that we'll hand harvest with the community in the fall, that will be placed in these bags, will be donated, bags and all, to local food pantries and community cupboards across the Roostick County uh, when we harvest the field this fall. In addition to that, two of the bags of potatoes will be delivered by Senator Susan Collins to the chef at the White House. Uh, so that design is going to make it all the way to Washington, D.C., and we're encouraging interested artists across the Aroostook County to go to acap-me.org slash potato dash bag dash contest, or you can just go to our main page at acap-me.org, and there's a button right at the top of the page to click on to get the information and even upload your design right there. We will be announcing the winner of the winning design um, at the Potato Blossom Festival uh, on the judges reviewing stand just prior to the parade uh, on Saturday, July 16th. So if you'd like to join us and see firsthand who is going to be the lucky artist featured on the potato bag, we'll be doing that on that day. We also wanted to remind folks that ACAP continues to offer a home buyer education class. And our next class is actually scheduled for this Saturday. It does go from it's an eight hour class it begins first thing in the morning. It sometimes gets out early. So if you want to uh, catch some of the pride events, you can do both. Um, and this is actually offered online. Uh, we continue to offer it completely online. Now we want to remind folks that participants do receive a certificate of completion for the home buyer education class, which can be presented at participating local main state housing lenders. And it provides a number of really great uh, incentives, including up to $3,500 through the main housing advantage program 
incentive that can be used toward your closing cost or down payment, which is really helpful. Uh, we do uh, bring in, in addition to our instructor, Don Whipke, local lenders, realtors, and title companies uh, who participate in the live classes or the, um, the uh, online live classes to provide participants with information around what to expect uh, in the home buying process. So if you're interested and are looking at potentially purchasing a home in the next couple of years or so, this is a great way to get in and learn some really great information and have some great incentives. Don Whipke is still taking uh, registrants for this Saturday's class. He can be reached at 554-4175 or at his email address there on your screen. Our home energy assistance program, we're reminding folks, especially right now with the additional burden uh, of the co high cost of energy, uh, that we estimate that about two to 3,000 more people in Aroostook County who are not currently enrolled in this program based upon uh, statistics um, and information from the most recent census could potentially be receiving assistance through the Home Energy Assistance Program. Please help us alleviate the burden for you right now. This is a great time of year to apply. The program is open for the current or the most recent season for about another month, and then the clock resets in mid-July, and we'll begin taking interviews and applications again for the next season. But if you have never applied before, we're really strongly encouraging folks to do that. And if you're wondering, do I qualify or do I come close to qualifying? This income um, guideline sheet is available on our website and you can check that out or you can give us a call here and we can go over with you on the phone whether a full application is something that would be warranted. Don't not apply if you see that you're not quite making it or might be just a little bit over. We do have a conversation that we can have with you about expenses that we might be able to deduct. You can call our energy program at 768-3053 to schedule an appointment. And again, we're doing them within the same week uh, this time of year. Um, we are continuing to uh, answer some questions for you related to the formula shortage uh, in terms of uh, what's happening nationally. And we know that, that a lot of moms have reached out to our WIC program about this. Uh, the question this week that we explore is, is it okay to put more water in baby formula to make it last longer? And the answer is bold and really a two letter no, a very strong no. It's not ever safe uh, to water down formula. Always follow the label instructions or those given to you by your pediatrician. If you do add extra water to formula, it reduces the amount of nutrients a baby will receive and it can slow growth and development and lead to some serious health problems. So uh, if, if, you having, if you're having other questions, we haven't gotten to your question yet um, this week uh, or up until this week, please do call our WIC program. Uh, that's the number for the state WIC office, but on the side of the screen there, you can see the number to our main office at 764-3721. Uh, and we'll be happy to walk you through it, whether you're a WIC customer or not. Um, and speaking of being a WIC customer, again, many folks assume that they don't, uh, they're not eligible for the WIC program. Uh, the WIC program actually has some of the more liberal program guidelines of any of the programs we offer here at our agency. Uh, and so many Aroostook County households do qualify. And it helps you get not only access to formula in this particular time, because we do have some formula that we have been able to obtain and are happy to share that with all of our WIC families. Um, but it also provides great um, incentives and uh, puts money on a WIC card for you to buy healthy groceries when you go to the grocery store. And I know that some folks are, are, are hesitant because they've heard of the old WIC vouchers and sort of the haggling that happens at the grocery store, but there have been some significant changes and there's now an e-WIC card uh, that really has changed the checkout process at grocery stores. And so we encourage folks to give this program another shot, especially right now with the cost of everything, including groceries. It's really hard to keep uh, food on the table for a young family. And so if you have a preschool age child, please do reach out to our WIC program. And if you're having challenges around baby formula and with questions around baby formula, we're here for you for that as well. Um, youth career counseling, we've been talking about this for a few weeks now here on ACAP Today. Uh, we are really looking for youth age 16 through 24. We have a number of programs, actually. This is one of them where we can work directly with youth. Uh, we'll talk with our guests uh, about another one uh, that they're working on this summer as well, and we've shared it before with you as well. But if you are looking in that age category and currently not attending school, and looking for a job or considering further education or training opportunities, it's a really good place to, to give us a call and a really good time to give us a call. We have support dollars available to help if it's going to school or if it's going directly into the workforce. 
even doing a job shadow. We can help pay you through a job shadow so an employee can see what you have and try you out and you can see if it's a career field that might be of interest to you. Uh, we can also provide financial supports for things like uniform and work clothes and support you with a cover letter and resume building and money management skills. Please do give us a call at, uh, you can call our main number or directly at 554-4137 or email our workforce development team. Kathy Williams' email is there on your screen as well. We also are reaching out to seniors and others across Aroostook County who, for whatever reason, didn't file main state income taxes, mostly because most of the households, because of their own social security income, very limited social security income. We want to help you access the $850 relief checks. Um, we're part of the Cash Main Coalition, uh, along with New Ventures Main, United Way of Aroostook, and others uh, here in Aroostook County. Uh, we have had nearly 1,000 seniors reach out to us for appointments across Aroostook County, and we've uh, processed about 700 of those returns with folks at this point, but we're inviting seniors. This is the month that the check payments are going out, but you have until the end of October uh, to file those taxes with us, so don't fret if we haven't gotten to you yet or if you're thinking you've missed the boat. Uh, you haven't, give us a call at 764-3721. We will add you to the list and call you to schedule an appointment here within the coming weeks. Uh, we're working diligently to get through the remainder of the appointments and continue to offer up opportunities to connect with us, including a recent uh, opportunity to do it in Fort Fairfield last week, and we went to Van Buren the week before. So when we see that we have a number of folks in a community, we're actually taking our show on the road, if you will, and going into that community at a local public library or other location so that we can uh, meet directly with folks in a place that's convenient for them. Um, but it's in many cases, uh, filling out the tax forms and helping uh, and us helping to complete the tax forms has not only helped each individual in the household receive the $850 relief check each adult, uh, but also has in many cases brought additional uh, tax return funds uh, into the household. And we're also working with folks to ensure that if they are eligible for programs like home energy assistance program and things like that, that we're connecting you with the resources to be able to do that when we meet with you uh, so that that can be helpful this winter as well. So again, call us 764-3721 if you would like us to assist in having your main state uh, taxes filed. Unfortunately, we can't help you with your federal taxes, but those are not required for this program. Um, just your state taxes and we're able to do that for you. And we also want to remind folks, especially homeowners out there, that the main home assistance fund program is now available. It launched at the beginning of the month of May. Uh, it's a, a much more limited program than the emergency rental assistance program. It essentially requires you to already be behind on your mortgage, housing, property tax, or utility payments and are at somewhat imminent risk of foreclosure. Uh, it's a little bit more of a complicated program, but it can provide up to $25,000 per eligible household. It's funded through the U U.S. Department of Treasury. Um, some of the eligibility requirements are there on your screen. We would encourage you if you are struggling um, with your payments uh, for your home or related uh, taxes and, uh, and utilities to go to maine.gov slash home assist or give us a call here at 764-3721 and we can help you complete the online application. Uh, we do have a team member who's working specifically on this program. Again, it's not as far reaching as the emergency rental assistance program, but certainly there to help those most vulnerable and most in need and those who are falling behind. So do give us a call or check out the website and consider completing an application if you feel that you qualify after you've read through the information online. The Emergency Rental Assistance Program, speaking of that, has also seen some changes to it uh, in recent weeks. Uh, we are wanting to remind folks that the income guidelines that are there on your screen, those continue to apply. Those have changed uh, slightly as well. Uh, we've gone from 80% to 50% uh, of, the, uh, of the median income in our, in our region. Um, and so uh, we really encourage you, especially seniors out there, the program has uh, gone down from 18 units or approximately 18 months of service to 12, but this is a great way to help sort of mitigate some of those high electric costs or other costs uh, and allow you to, to put a little bit away in savings uh, for a time period here. Please do give us a call at 764-3721. If you're struggling with your rent, uh, we can help you online to fill out the application, or if you're able to go online and wanna go to mainrentrelief.com, you can begin that process as well. 
We're also in our COVID-19 section reminding folks that levels do remain high uh, in much of Maine and well, including here in Aroostook County. Uh, so we're reminding folks age five and older who are eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine and wanna consider going online to check out where they can do that locally. The website is there. If you are in need of assistance registering for a vaccine appointment, if you prefer to have an appointment as opposed to a walk-in at a local pharmacy, uh, call us at 764-3721. We can help you navigate the website and determine where it's best for you to have that appointment. There's also a free vaccine ride program available that we can help connect you with so that transportation is not a challenge. This is for both initial vaccines and for boosters. As a reminder, if you'd like more information about the upcoming release of the youth vaccines or the early childhood vaccines for those under the age of five, uh, there is a MECAP forum and Maine Community Action Partnership Forum that is posted on ACAP's uh, Facebook presence that you can watch to get your questions answered by some uh, leading experts in the state uh, regarding the safety and concerns that parent, parents have around the new upcoming vaccine for children under the age of five. We are also reminding folks that you can get a third round now of free at-home tests available. You can go to covidtest.gov or you can call the number there on your screen. Uh, they have released again that third round. Uh, it's a, a three sets of four free at-home COVID-19 tests that you're up to eligible for now at this point. They usually ship within seven to 12 days. And we encourage you if you are in need to call uh, and uh, sort of assume that there, there might be a need uh, to get those uh, into your household. And finally, on COVID-19 community supports, we continue to offer supports for individuals who are asked to isolate or quarantine, including grocery and meal deliveries and shelter assistance to stay in the home and other uh, supplies. Please give us a call at 764-3721 or go to the Department of Health and Human Services website and look at COVID community social supports. That will help you uh, get connected in uh, with those services. Um, and as we continue and move forward, if you have any needs that you're unable to uh, that you're unable to receive at this time, or just not sure where to turn, our ACAP navigators are standing by, and we encourage you to reach out to us at 764-3721, and our navigators can assist you uh, in terms of getting connected with services, whether they're those of our agency or other agencies. Uh, through CARES Act funding, we're able to do this uh, and continue to provide those services for the community. That's this week's news and information that you can use. And now we turn to our feature interview for this week. Uh, we're so excited to welcome to the program three guests, uh, some repeat guests. Uh, first of all, I want to reintroduce uh, Meg Hegman. Meg, welcome back to the program. Meg is uh, the coordinator of, of our prevention services here at ACAP. And Meg, I know you've been very involved in the topic we're going to be discussing today. And so it's great to have you back on the program. Happy to be here. Thanks. And Bryn Wilcox, you'll remember Bryn from conversations about our improving outcomes for youth program, which she leads um, and is a key member of our prevention team as well. Bryn, welcome back. Thank you for having me. And we're also very pleased to be joined by Kate Easter on this edition of ACAP Today. Uh, Kate is with Pride Aroostook. And Kate, it's great to have you on the broadcast as well. I think you're going to provide some great insight into some great activities coming up and really a great body of work that the folks with Pride Aroostook are working diligently on uh, to both raise awareness and to raise, um, you know, just a general education and knowledge here in the community. So welcome. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. All right, so let's context set for folks out there. Uh, Pride Aroostook as an organization is a group that's been doing some great work for a number of years now here in Aroostook County. Um, and Kate, given that you're our official representative with the organization on today's broadcast, tell folks out there about Pride um, and about the work that you have been doing over the years. Thank you. Um, so Pride is an international thing. Uh, it happens all over the world. It usually happens in June. Um, and it is to support and recognize those who are part of the LGBTQ+, and that is the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning. And then plus means anybody else who falls in that. Um, there's a wide range of letters. And it's a support for those who fall in that community um, for whom sometimes there's not a lot of support. Um, there's not a lot of acceptance. And so for those of us that are part of that community, um, it gives us 
a way to sort of celebrate ourselves um, and to see who's around us, um, to see who our allies are. Um, and so it's one of those things that it allows people all over the world, um, you know, to join together. And we in rural America know that we need to support each other. We are already community minded. And so being able to do this together um, helps us as a larger community um, in our tiny town. And, and I will note, Kate, that the word that we're you're consistently using there is community. And this really is about building community and it's about building unity in the larger community as well. Um, so maybe talk about um, the work of the Pride Aroostook organization, because I know that it really brings together a wide cross section of our community. Um, and and it's it's more than just about the, the event that happens or the, even the month of June. It's really a 12 month year round, 24 seven sort of, uh, of, of body of work that is happening um, and great things are happening as a result. Yeah, no, it really is. We have some amazing, uh, team members. Um, the steering committee is, there are some incredible people who have a lot of energy on that team. And Meg is there and Bryn is there and there are so many others. Um, and it is just, I will probably tear up, honestly. It, I will probably cry um, because the support of a rustic county has blown me away. It really has. I did not expect when we started, when we reformed um, in the end of 2020, um, there was some stuff that went on in 2018 and 2019. Um, there was some refor reformation in 2020. And then at the end of 2021, right? Yes. At the end of 2021, we had to reform our committee again. And that's when ACAP came in. Um, and that, at that time, the community, that was at the end of 2021. Um, and the community has just rallied. Um, you know, we've got so much support and so many organizations who are and churches and companies and individuals um, who are just standing beside us and are standing behind us um, and are standing in front of us if something goes wrong. Um, and you need those allies and you need those bystanders in any community. Um, and we are so grateful for them. And, and Meg Hegman, you know, being a part of community action and the community action movement, and also specifically the work that your prevention team does, this equity lens, this inclusion lens is really a foundational part of the work that we are set to do in community action. I just had the pleasure last week of spending time with community action agencies from across the country that Jamie Chandler and I got to help mentor in their whole family approach. And it's about creating access and a community that um, truly um, works across uh, the entire community to make sure that all boats are lifted. Um, and so talk about the importance of the engagement, both from a community action perspective, but also from the work that you do and your prevention team does to make sure that we are an inclusive and united community. Absolutely. Um, so that's really kind of the the intersection of my my passions, I guess. So um, I've been involved in uh, in Pride and Gay Straight Alliances and things like that um, in different places that I've lived for for decades now. Um, and coming into the prevention field, which was um, a relatively new career for me, being really struck by um, how how different subsets of the population are affected differently and are targeted differently by um, particularly commercial tobacco, by alcohol industry. And so from a prevention lens, we know that people who are at greater risk of isolation are at greater risk of negative health outcomes. And unfortunately, the society that we live in right now 
um, can t tend to um, to further isolate those with a different um, gender or sexuality presentation, regardless of actual identity, even. Um, and so, I think um, looking at the statistics, the the rates of suicidal thoughts, let alone um, rates of completion or death by suicide, um, alcohol use, substance use disorders, early onset tobacco use. Um, again, it's, it's a way that people who are under constant stress, which is the case for many marginalized communities, um, and then they're specifically targeted by those who want to benefit financially from their demise. And so that's why, um, from a prevention standpoint, ACAP decided that we really needed to step in and provide the kind of organizational support that the pride group um, needed to just to provide some of the, I like to call it administrative support, um, to provide some of the background work um, so that those who are part of the community can, as Kate mentioned, they, they can be in front and we're just providing the, the kind of logistical um, legal background work to enable them to um, be more visible in the community because we all benefit when any marginalized community is lifted up and supported. That makes it safer for everyone. And I think one of the benefits before we get into the specifics of what's happening on this Saturday um, that I want to sort of get from the perspective of Bryn. Bryn, you work with youth across Aroostook County. And, and one of the thing, refreshing perspectives you always bring to the table is you're a member of, 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 a, of the young community as well. You're a young careerist. And so uh, how, how, how important is this foundational work that's happening across Aroostook County uh, to build a more inclusive community. How important is that specifically to the youth? We're going to talk a little bit later about a, a youth event that we're going to be looking at and, and how we're making youth feel more inclusive. But you work with youth, you work with youth that are sometimes experiencing challenging situations. Where do youth stand around issues um, that Pride Aroostook is lifting up? It is vitally important to our um counting youth. Also, I might tear up because Kate made me almost cry <laughs> when she was talking. So thank you, Kate. Um, it is vitally important for our county youth or for any youth in general to feel like they are they belong and that they're valued and that they have worth and importance in their community, um, especially if they're um, in like inner if they are members and kind of intersect in multiple marginalized communities um it's invaluable to be able to um have that kind of acceptance and to know that not just like you're you have a couple of teachers who really care and you have friends who care about you but to know that a community as a whole and that there are so many um adults and community leaders and business owners and even other youth who either identify in the community or um, are allies to the community. Um, we did, we've put together a suicide prevention presentation um, and we base part of it off of some of the statistics from the CARES program out of uh, Northern Light Acadia Hospital. And um, the statistics of youth suicide in Maine were absolutely astonishing. I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but it was it was a lot. Um, and uh, youth who identify as transgender or within the trans community um, or in the um, LGBTQ plus community um, were at three times the risk because of those feelings of isolation and um, otherness and oftentimes hostility that just being different um, can can cause. So it's really nice in our not so geographically little <laughs> Rustic County um, to see the support that we've seen so far. Um, and I 
I'm rambling now. But, well, um, yeah. Brenna, thank you for sharing that perspective because I think it's very important and you're helping set some context for where we're going to take the conversation in just a little bit and come back to some of the great work that's happening to support youth uh, in the community. But I want to come back to Kate now for, for, for some time, Kate, to sort of walk us through the uh, happenings this Saturday at Riverside Park in Presque Isle because uh, it's really a day to to sort of to, to, to look at it for, at things from a different perspective and look at progress and look at uh, celebrating a, a vibrant community and a community that supports a vibrant community within. Um, so talk us through a Pride of Roostic events this Saturday. Absolutely. Um, so we have we have vendors. Um, so we've got food with scoops will be there. Um, we've got um, just community vendors who will be there. So there's going to be art and there's going to be crafts. And um, then we have community resource tables that will be there. So we've got everybody. I mean, ACAP's going to be there. We've been, you know, all over the place. We've got, um, you know, AMHC, the sexual assault services. Uh, we've got you know, progressive community members in the area and around the state. Um, there's an organization, there's a couple organizations coming up from Southern Maine um, to participate in Pride Aroostook. They have dedicated staff and time um, to do that, which is amazing. Um, but we also have um, the Presque Isle community players will be there. They'll be doing improv and theater games all over all day. Um, there will be a community art making table with the Aristic Partners in the Arts will be there. Um, there's also a new band called Above the Frost Line um, and they will be there as well. Um, one of the more, most exciting things that's happening is there's a screen printer from uh, Portland coming up um, named Little Chair Printing. And she is printing uh, bandanas with the logo, the moose logo on it, um, on them. And the first 200 people who arrive um, will get one for free. Um, and so they will be available. Um, so she'll be there from one o'clock on. Um, starting at two, um, there will be a, a little mini walking parade. We're just going to go through the park. Um, we're going to start over at the splash pad because we're at Riverside Park. So we're going to start over at the splash pad and we'll probably go through the park and up and around, um, you know, but I, we will see who comes, um, you know, people bring your uh, bring your best clothes, bring your most fabulous clothing, um, you know, your rainbows, your flags, whatever um your walking shoes and we will we will do it with whomever is there um and you know it might be a little damp because it's june in aroostook county so it might rain on us but i think it's going to be okay and um you know we've got tents and we also we have lawn games and we have um just it just it just seems to keep growing every day. There's something new that shows up. Um, and it's, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be fun. Um, there'll also be some quiet tents. Um, you know, there's opportunities for people to talk. If you need, you know, a, li a listening ear um, and a caring heart to hear you, um, that will be there. Um, you know, so you can definitely, you know, and if nothing else, you know, one of the things I say to a lot of people right now, because some people are a little worried about coming, they're a little scared, um, is that number one, there's going to be a lot of people who care there. There's a lot of us who live in this community ourselves. Um, you know, we are part of the LGBTQ community. We live in Aroostook County for a reason. And the flags, you know, there's nothing like seeing a rainbow flag on a house to make me stop and take a picture. I've done it all over Aroostook County um, because it just makes me glad every time. Um, and there are going to be flags. I think we have 30 or 40 of them um, on all of the uh, fence posts along Riverside Park. So if you can't come, to Pride, um, for whatever reason, I would highly encourage you to at least drive by the bridge and see the flags mm -hmm. and see the people um, because that matters, that matters too.
And and you know, I think that this is this is happening across the country, which is wonderful because you know I mentioned earlier, uh, Jamie Chandler and I, our COO, were in uh, St. Paul this past week, and uh, there's a huge bridge crossing the Mississippi, and there's there's flag poles all along the bridge, and every other flag was the pride flag. It was, it, you know, so it was the US flag and the pride flag prominently displayed throughout the month of June. So uh, it's great to see that um, our community um, is going to have that happening here as well in this community and showing our support. Um, and I just want a couple of, 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 of sort of things to go along with that, Kate, just to reiterate and underscore that this is open to the entire community, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, and absolutely. Then, Anybody who wants to be there. And this is the second annual, so you know from the previous one when you when you first um, hosted this event last year that it is it's a it's it's an opportunity for the community to come together to celebrate, but also mm -hmm. there are those quiet spaces that you spoke about. So it really is trying to make this event be an opportunity for people to come from wherever they're at um, and, and and be a part of. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and yeah, wherever you are in your journey. Awesome. Uh, Meg Hegman, um, part of that journey for many youth um, are, are, is unfortunately dealing with very challenging situations. And I know you and your prevention team are working with schools across the county. Um, and, and Bryn sort of shared how, how devastating some of the statistics are, especially for, mm -hmm. um, for youth uh, in the community who are, who are feeling more isolated. And, and, and I think all youth are feeling a little more isolated than they were prior to the pandemic, but this is an extra uh, challenging situation for many of our youth out there. Talk about some of the work that you and your team are doing to help reduce risk for students in this regard. Sure. So, um, you know, our team works a lot with, with young people. Um, and one of the things that um, we are doing, even, even at Pride, is um, making sure that young people are included. So some of the yard games um, are, you know, all ages, and, and we also have, so um, Bryn has put together a story walk that will be there that day, that is a children's book about the Pride flag um, and who first created that. And so um, there will be information on that and, and also a, a big piece of um, kind of education. So I, I think one of the reasons that, that these events are so important is um, that, and, and one of the reasons they're open to the whole community is because allies really play a, a critical role as well, in part because for some folks in the community, as Kate mentioned, there's there's fear and it's a legitimate fear. And so um, the more allies who are willing to fly flags and attend these events and sponsor these events and that kind of thing, the safer it makes the community for everyone. So part of, you know, I feel like part of my role is, is to um, be a presence for those who are still in the closet or for those who um, are, you know, too afraid to fly a flag because they might be targeted. I, as a, um, as a straight cisgender person, I feel like I can take risks, um, because I don't have the trauma of facing microaggressions and full-on aggressions on a regular basis. And so, um, so I feel like that's part of the way I can, I can, um, stand with folks. So, um, that comes to play also in terms of the um, the gay straight alliances. Okay, so what happens is um, there was research done in Canada, um, and articles showed that there are schools that have uh, gay straight alliances. They might be called something different depending on the school system, um, and there are some that have. Um, the anti-bullying specific around anti-homophobic bullying policies. And schools that had those things in place were not only safer for the gay community members, but they were safer for everyone. So um, that bringing together of people from a marginalized community with their allies who are willing to have their back um, and and be visible in that um, supportive stance 
that decreased suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts, um, and also reduced alcohol use and, and commercial tobacco use among their straight counterparts. So it really made a huge difference. Um, and, and it was a, a huge study um, that, that really showed the impact on improving everyone's well being when we come together to support the gay community. And so, um, so that's one of the things that we are looking forward to pursuing after the weekend, right? After the month of June and the celebration, it's not like the work ends when the celebration is over, um, that that can propel us forward into improving things for all people in Aroostook County going forward. And, and Kate, one of the ways that Is that, that work that? will continue um, and continue into July and beyond is with an event specifically designed about supporting county youth. So talk to us about that event. We were just focused on the June Pride event this weekend, but there's another event coming up as well that's really specifically geared for youth. Pride doesn't end in June. It goes year round. Um, we have it year round. Yeah, there is um, a real need in Aroostook County schools, um, high schools, colleges are doing pretty well right now. Um, but there's a real need in the high schools and the upper middle schools to have a supportive place in the schools and GSAs, or they might be called diversity clubs or civil rights teams, um, they can do that for the schools. Unfortunately, with um, some budget cuts that are happening in schools around the country right now, um, there are some staff that are not able to continue doing sort of those extracurricular things um, because the budget just is not there. So that's something that Pride Aroostook and ACAP are working together on is to create this sort of just a listening session right then and there in July. It'll be July 18th, um, and which is a Monday um, at Collins Pond Park in Caribou. And basically, it's just we just want people to come and talk to us about what you want. Um, you know, what would be helpful for you? There's a lot of organizations in this county that have space that may be able to hold drop-ins for LGBTQ plus youth. Um, there's organizations and people in this county who are willing to be facilitators of that. Um, we just need to meet you so we know what we can do and what the youth want. Um, we would love youth to be there because we need to know what is helpful for you. Because, um, you know, it's been a long time since I was in high school. Um, Caribou High School has changed a lot since then. And so I think that it is really important for the youth to be there so we can connect the dots for each other and be a community. Um, you know, we know that if there's an adult that a youth is connected to, that that reduces suicide risk. Um, you know, we know that having a community and space to be yourself, even if it's just for a couple hours a week, reduces risks of alcohol or substance use, suicidal thoughts, um, and that is what matters. And what that also does is it makes it so, you know, when us LGBTQ plus youth, when we were youth, get to be adults, we come back. We are the employees. We raise our families here. And that's it's a long-term goal. Um, you know, is to keep a young person to be a young adult and then an older adult. 
Let's um, let's uh, we're, we're about to end our time together, so I just kind of like to get last reflections from all of you. We'll go around the table. Kate, I'm going to end with you, um, but I'm going to start with you, Meg. Um, I think one of the uh, sort of themes and the threads through this conversation is that there's there's work to do, but there's definitely been progress. And I think that I feel that in in from all of you, um, and Kate in, in particular, with your 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 inspirational sort of thoughts about how far you've seen things come um, in your life. Um, so, Meg, uh, your thoughts about uh, as we are in this Pride Month, uh, heading into a, a Pride Weekend here in Aroostook County, um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I am. Um, I have been similarly um, impressed by. I think there are a lot of stereotypes about Aroostook County that can sometimes be um, more negative around being an insular community and and that sort of thing. And I have been just really thrilled to see the outpouring of support for all people. Um, and, and that has been exhibited through the support for Pride. So um, even one of the most exciting things for me, I think, is that the Teamsters Union is going to be driving a tractor trailer um, to Presque Isle from, I think, from New Hampshire up as a show of support. They will be at Pride and they have um, specifically asked us to reach out to other Teamsters. So if you're listening and you're, part, and you're a Teamster, please come down to Pride. And I think that's, um, again, just a, a huge show of support. Um, and the financial sponsors, I, I wanna give kind of a shout out to them as well. So Morningstar Art and Framing, um, University of Maine at Presque Isle, University of Maine at Fort Kent, Northern Light, AR Gold, Presque Isle, um, UCC Church. Um, I'm probably forgetting some, Kate can fill me in if I'm, if I'm missing anybody else. Um, but that support, really is is critical and i'm i'm just very hopeful that we're going to have uh an amazing day and the reason that matters is because it increases the visibility and decreases the social isolation of those who are most at risk so showing your support really does matter thank you megan and bring your final thoughts as a member of the youth community um, for for your generation and for those that will follow? Um, it's so easy right now to feel like things are so dark. Um, and pride is, um, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, it's a light. Um, and I get the absolute pleasure to work with our county youth almost every day. <laughs> Um, and I've never walked away from an experience with a young person not feeling hopeful, but it's also not fair to put that burden on our young people. And so to see our community come together like this to support um, each other and everyone and all people <laughs> from all walks of life and all communities at Pride brings hope. Um, in a different way. And it shows our young people that like, it is not all dark and that there is so much light and so much love and acceptance um, in our beautiful little county. Um, and it makes me very, very grateful and very, very hopeful. I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> Well, thank you, Bryn. I appreciate that. That was, I know that was very heartfelt and uh, it, it, I think it was very impactful as well. And, and Kate, I'm going to transition to you as one of the sparks that's bringing that light into our community. Uh, and what are your thoughts heading into this Pride weekend and into all of, of, of the very good things? I think we, we tend to, to, to Bryn's point, we tend to focus sometimes too much on the darkness, but there's a lot of really good. And I know that your glass is always half full. This, oh, I, it is just, you know, I think the things that I keep thinking about, um, I graduated Caribou High School in 1995. It's a long time ago. Um, and there were, I don't know how old they would have been, uh, 30s, 40s. They were old when I was 17. Um, but they were out and proud 
in Aroostook County in 1991 to 1995 and before that. One of the first hotlines, helplines in the state of Maine was run out of caribou for years. A lot of people don't know that. There's a lot of history here. One of the first major conferences in the state for the LGBTQ community was held at UMPI in the 80s. There's a lot of history here. And it is an amazing place to be in 2022. I just had to look at my clock because I was like, is it what year is it? Um, in 2022, to be doing this far more openly and with such, I just, I don't know how to say it. I mean, there are companies and organizations that are supporting us that I didn't know that. I didn't know that they would do that. And, you know, in the stories I've heard, the people who have come to me with their stories to say, you know, my grandchild, my auntie, you know, they left, they didn't think they could come back. And I have friends who live internationally who don't, won't live in Aroostook County, we grew up together. But by doing this, they've said, yeah, you know, you're doing something that's going to make it different for the next 20 years. Um, yeah. And so I think that that's, um, that's a real blessing. It is a real blessing to know that our little steering committee is making a huge difference. And I will just stop in a minute, um, but they, I hope they know that, um, that the steering committee of, there are, I think, 12 of us um, now. I hope they know that because they have made a huge difference to so many people in this county. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting us do this. Well, thank you, Pete. That's like, I think that's a great note to end it on because I think that as we uh, take a moment, take a month, uh, take a lifetime to celebrate pride, we also need to pause and uh, recognize progress. And I think that that's, that's clearly come through um, in this conversation. So thank you uh, for bringing, all three of you, for bringing uh, that into this conversation because I think it's very important. I think we all kind of, as Bryn pointed out, kind of get stuck in the darkness all, oftentimes and can point at when something isn't going well, but it's nice to see that there's definite progress and, and people uh, moving forward together. And that the, the together and that community theme also is very vibrant in this conversation. So, so thank you all three. Um, as we sort of transition to uh, close out this edition of, of ACAP today, we also want to remind folks out there that ACAP is continuing to look for great members to join our team. Uh, we have uh, positions open across Aroostook County and even a social worker position currently open in Washington County to work with our Youth Homeless Demonstration Project. So if you are interested in joining the ACAP team, uh, check out our acap-me.org, our website there, and you can see what some of the positions, these positions are require for credentials, and we'd be happy to receive your application. And lastly, as we end this week's edition of ACAP Today, we take our throwback photo of the week for our 50th anniversary, and it takes us back to just actually 20 years ago. I hate it when Kate says 1995 was a long time ago because I don't want to admit to that, but it, it was. Uh, but we're going back two decades to 2002 when then Governor John Baldacci um, helped ACAP celebrate its 30th anniversary. Uh, this was at the annual meeting traditionally held in November. Um, and that was when you were celebrating 30 years. And of course, uh, that is part of our history now celebrating 50 years. Uh, this year, and we're happy that we've seen so many of you join in the activities and happy that one of those activities that's part of our community 
uh, 50th anniversary celebration is, is happening this weekend at Riverside Park, and that's the support that we have for the Pride event uh, as one of the wonderful community activities in Aroostook County that really is, in a way, Kate, you're kind of kicking off the summer festival season for us here in Aroostook County because there are many more to come after that, and ACAP is going to be there with Pride this weekend and at other community festivals throughout the summer. So please do stop in and say hi to our ACAP team that's hitting the road uh, to all of the great events in Aroostook County this summer, beginning with this one this weekend. Uh, we'll see you on the next edition of ACAP today. Hope to see many of you this weekend from 1 to 5 at Riverside Park in Presque Isle for the Pride Aroostook event. And everyone have a great week and we'll be back next week with another edition of ACAP today.